Welcome, saints. May the favor and blessings and anointing of the Lord touch you today with refreshing and encouragement and grace. Let's begin with a little chorus. Look what the Lord has done. Well, now look what the Lord has done. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
What a day that will be. Which year are we going to go this time? Shall we try it? Okay. <laughs> what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see when I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through Yes, 
Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. You say, preacher, that don't make no sense. You need to remember, remember that every breath you take, you're one breath closer to eternity. Amen. And get that in your spirit. This time here is short. Amen. I, I don't know if this is a good comparison. I don't. I, I think it's really kind of wimpy. But if we could take all of the oceans of all our worlds, and that could represent eternity, it's really kind of wimpy because eternity is a lot bigger than that. But if it could, your life is less than a drop. Mm -hmm. Your life on this earth is just 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 minuscule compared to all of eternity. So make sure you do this one right because you want to make sure you spend eternity in the right place. Amen. I'm going to preach in a few minutes. But, uh, sometimes we need to remember why we serve the Lord. Because of what he's done for us. Amen? Mm -hmm. We shall see the king. Amen. Are we, we're starting with verse now? Okay, that's yeah, the idea. He's going to switch it. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. The wedding of the bride, united with the groom. Yes, we shall see the day. Did I go too high? Maybe go the right way. We shall see the day. Do it again. Just do it again. He's going to sing it, then I'll just follow along. <laughs> you should. <laughs> he can sing. I know he can. We, we practice this before you all get here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Really? <laughs> Sometimes he takes the key, he wants to sing it in, and he moves it. Yeah. And then I find it. See, so you moved that. I, I did. And yeah. he claps it. You do know we get to have this going to be a lot of fun like that. Amen. Amen. But I will not be in charge of the choir. <laughs> we shall see the king. Yes, we shall see the king. We shall. We shall see the king.
the second coming. And when he comes back the second time, yeah. we're going to be with him. So, of course, we're going to see it. Amen. The rapture happens first. Now, a little over seven years prior. Amen. Oh, man, I can preach now. Oh. Mm. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. With joy we welcome His returning. It may be morn, it may be night or noon. We know He's coming soon. In these the closing days of time.
Everybody, everybody loves somebody. Amen. Wow. What a privilege to be in God's house today. Amen. Yeah. Oh, have a little bit of fun during the worship. But you know what? I think heaven is going to be a little bit of fun, saints. Mm -hmm. And I think Amen. sometimes we need to remind ourselves that, that heaven is not going to be some boring, dull place. It's going to be a place of joy and celebration yeah. and favor and wonder and love. Of all the things that you can imagine, I guarantee you heaven is going to be better than that. Yeah. It's going to be better than that. Amen. And I got a pretty good imagination. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's cover a few things we've got going on this week. The mission of Bethel Chapel to reach, teach, build, equip, and send. The vision of Bethel Chapel to reach the lost for the cross. Our theme for the year, hope from above. Our theme verse, Luke 21, 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Luke 21, 28, our verse for the month of July, Psalm 71, 5. For thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. Psalm 71, 5. Amen. Put that brand new verse in your spirit and exalt the King. Amen. Well, this is Independence Day weekend. We honor those who serve. We remember those who have fallen. But I would remind you that we have another independence as Christians from the world. Amen. And we have a freedom in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah, you're free. I want to honor him. Amen. <laughs> All our growth group resume not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. So put that on your calendar. It's July 12th. This week is the 5th. Next Wednesday is the 12th. We're going to jump into a new series. Powerful series that will bless you. Amen. We have a giving station in the back that ties into our app system with the app. You can click on there and you can see the calendar. And see what's coming up. Amen. With the app, you can give. With the app, you can listen to messages. I spoke with someone this week and they said, I want to hear the preaching. So I, it took me a few minutes, but I finally helped them get the app on their phone. I didn't have no teenager hand by it, right? Because they would have done it in seconds. Amen. But anyway, we got it on there. And then, and then once it was on there, I showed them how they just pushed the button and there's the message. They can listen to it. So that's really cool. Amen. And, 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 and those of you that want to, so sometimes the slides go by fast. That's not the operator in the back. That's the preacher up here because they try to follow me. But when you get home, if you want to see them again, you can look at them in the app. Or you can look at them online on the computer. Or if you want to be real fancy and see the preaching, you see Brother Lopez and he will teach you how to get it on there. Because it's YouTube, right? Yes, sir. YouTube what? Um, you YouTube, tell me how to do it. I, I'm going to write it. Cha Bethel Chapel Anchorage, Alaska, Pastor Robert Evans. Bethel Chapel Anchorage, Pastor Robert Evans. And yeah. it'll have the date on there. If that's not working, go to YouTube. <laughs> like, I like the way you think. And he gets it up there a lot faster than I do. Sometimes it doesn't, doesn't even go on until like 9 at night. But uh, amen. So, so that's three different ways that you can listen to the message and share it with others and grow a little bit. Amen? Amen. Why do I get on that? Because it's important that we rehearse the word. Right. And it's important we tell our neighbors and our friends about the word so they can get to heaven. Amen? Amen. Mm. Amen. Our prayer family this week is the Rainey family. We're praying for Francis Rainey and her family, asking God to touch and bless. So let's do our connection blessing. Today we are giving away, I had it somewhere, a picnic blanket. Hmm. It folds up really nice like that, but it opens up real big. So, I don't know how that works. Well, I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tangled up in Jesus. I'm wrapped up, wrapped up I'm tied up, up, I'm tangled up in Jesus. I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tangled up in Jesus. I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in love. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Brother. Vincent Manchot, bless you. Amen. Let's 
Let's worship God with our tithes and offering. Let's get back into the Lord as he has blessed. I want you to know, saints, God loves to bless you. So 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 that he can multiply and grow. Amen? You can doubt, give the Lord, no matter what you do, for you'll find out in the end that the Lord's outgiven you your silver and your gold, your love and service too. Yes, you'll find out in the end that the Lord's outgiven you. Oh, you can't doubt, give the Lord. Your silver and your gold, your love and service too. Yes, you'll find out in the end that the Lord's outgiven you. Would you pray with the hands of the givers, those that are not to give? Remember the Rainy family as you pray today. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. We ask, Father, that you bless the people as they gave forth of their tithes and offerings and bless those that have not to give. And a special blessing upon the Rainy family, Lord, regarding the continuance of reading and learning more of your word and yes, salvation. And then ask a special blessing upon the pastor as he brings forth your word and open our ears to hear this message, Lord. Yes, so it is. Yes. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Amen. And all the children will be upstairs today. Their teacher is out playing in this beautiful state of ours. Oh, yeah. Amen. So that's why you got blessed with someone who sings different. Amen. <laughs> so when she comes back, make sure you tell her, we really missed you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. She does she do good. He just hits the right note and just sings nice. And, mm -hmm. yeah. I tell you, that's a gift. <laughs> Amen. Good Open your Bibles, please, saints, to Galatians 5. We're in the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians, and we're going to glorify the king. And, and Sister Becky, I just got it. Did I mess up that one song and had no words on it? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. So that wasn't her, that was me. You think that thing is broke? That's because I, I uh, <clears throat> fixed it last night. Yeah. So, if you only knew what was going on in my brain, amen. Galatians 5, verse 13. Would you stand with me? I am so glad there'll be no computers in heaven. <laughs> and if they are, they will definitely work. Amen. Mm -hmm. Galatians 5, verse 13. Saints, today God will bless you. Amen. Just for being in his house, God will bless you. Just for hearing his word, God will bless you. But you open your heart to receive, and those blessings multiply. Amen. Galatians 5, 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye hate, if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Now, if you turn to Galatians chapter 2, we're going to read verse 20 together. Galatians 2, 20. 
Galatians 2.20. I am crucified, crucified with Christ. With Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20. Woo! Wow, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yes, sir, how do you pray for the next of your messengers today? Father, we just thank you for your presence. Yes, thank Lord. Thank you for your healing mercies. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, Father. We just thank you for being you. And God, we worship you. And Father, bless the pastor right now. Anoint him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet with the, with the word you have for us today, yes, tomorrow, Lord. and forever. And Father, we thank you for all this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank and you, everyone Lord. said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated, saints. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 I am who I am because of who he is in me. Amen. Mm -hmm. I overcome sin because of his help. Mm -hmm. I walk in victory because of his grace. Yeah. I take a breath and I live because he loves to bless me. Yeah. Wow. Why would someone stay in sin when you can walk free of sin? Why would someone say stay in despair when you can walk free of despair? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but maybe at least one of you knows somebody that's going through something. Mm -hmm. Maybe a hard time, maybe a battle, maybe a trial. They need the Savior. They need the answer. You say, wait, but Pastor, that's me. I'm going through something. <laughs> well, I want you to know the Savior is there for you too. Amen. And he will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will give you life and breath and favor and grace and his love will go before you, and his answer will surround you, and peace will fill your heart and your life. Mm -hmm. As we thank the Lord for our freedom, yes. we should remember the fallen and faithfully serve the Lord. On this Independence Day weekend, I would pray that we learn how to pray. And thank God for our freedom. Amen? Amen. Sister, you Amen. have the video clip there. If you play that, please. Douglas Moon. 
just maybe what you're really seeking is not found in this world, but it is found in the one that is to come. Amen. The Bible gives us the guidelines and the structure to live free in Christ. From God's word, we find the path to freedom, hope, forgiveness, and love. From his word, we find every single answer to every single need. Notice I said find. You're going to have to spend some time searching. Yes. It doesn't just, you don't just, Lord, I need help with finances, so I just plunk my Bible open and pick a verse. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, Bow down, and we will more go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. Boy, that just met my financial need, didn't it? No, you've got to search for the verse that you need. Amen? And the best way to do that is to spend some time in reading it. And when you find those verses, keep a little notepad and jot some things down. Oh, here's a verse on finance. And here's a verse on healing. Here's a verse on prayer. Here's a verse on grace. Here's a verse on love. Yeah. Before you know it, you build this this little this little this little notebook filled with all these places to find verses. Amen. The Bible gives us guidance, structure to live free in Christ. So, from God's word, we find the path to give us the hope that we need. With the Bible as my guide. I choose to follow Christ. With the Bible as my guide, I choose to follow Christ. Number one, love your neighbor as yourself. Hmm. It says in Galatians 5, 13 through 14, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve one another. Yes. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do you know why some people have trouble loving their neighbor? They don't love themselves. <laughs> now, I do not mean that you should be conceited and consumed with yourself. Hello. Because we got a whole world full of people that are that way. Man, they pass by a mirror. They don't pass by. They stop the dog. Wow, look at that. You know, it's messed up. Amen? That's not the kind of loving yourself the Bible is talking about. It's talking about seeing what God has done in you and recognizing that he has changed you and transformed you. And now you are a person that you can live with because he's made you a person that others can live with. But you can't love somebody else until you learn how to love yourself. How you learn to grow in the grace and the maturity that God has put in you. How his word has reshaped you. And you don't see who you used to. Now you see who God has made you. You'll not be able to love your neighbor if you do not have the love of God in you. So many people try to love, love, love somebody with what they have. No, you need what he has Amen. to love somebody else. Amen. And the more crazy things people do, the more you're going to need the love of God to love others. Amen? Amen. Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yes. See, they came to Jesus. They said, Master, what is the great commandment? He said, well, there's two. The greatest of all is love God. Yes. Love him with all of your being. All of your mind, all of your soul, all of your body, all that you are, you love God. But the second is like that, that you would love your neighbor as yourself. And then he said, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. Every single law that God wrote falls under one of these two main headings. 
See, if you love your neighbor, you won't steal from your neighbor. Amen. Hello? Mm -hmm. If you love God, you won't take his name in vain. Amen. Hello? If you love God, you won't fashion an idol and bow down to it. Amen. Amen. If you love God, you'll, you'll do what he said and, and take a day of rest. Amen. If you love God, you won't, you won't come after your neighbor's wife. Amen. Oh, I got an amen. Hello. Amen. Or their stuff. Amen. If you love God, you'll do what he said. If you love your fellow man, you'll do what God told you to do for them. So like children, you'll honor your parents. But I don't like what they said. The Bible doesn't say honor me because you like what they said. <laughs> Hello? All the law and the prophets hanged in this. I just, I just took you through a couple of the Ten Commandments, but there, there's lots of scriptures that talk about things that God wants us to do, and Jesus said all the law hangs on these two. You'll not be able to love your neighbor if you do not love yourself. James 2.8 If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture... Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. James said if you really want to do what you're supposed to be doing, it all hinges on how you love others. How you show them the love of Christ, and you let the love of Christ flow through you. Uh -huh. Loving your neighbor is one of the identifying characteristics of a true Christian. This is what separates Christianity from all of the other religions of the world. Amen. They're trying to do good works to get to heaven. We're just letting the love of God flow through us to others. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. yes. And the fact that Christianity is a religion. It's a relationship with God. Amen? Amen. John 13, 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. You know what's funny? If you're a genuine Christian, people know it. That's right. And you'll get one of two responses. Oh, you're a Christian. You love the Lord? Or... Oh, so you're one of them. <laughs> but they know who you are. Yep. You know, they don't say that about Muslims. Hello? Hello. They don't say that about the other religion. They don't say, oh, you're one of them. Oh, no, they never say that. Oh, well, wonderful. I'm glad that's what you do. But Christianity, they distinguish you immediately. Saints, you are known. Are you known for good? Are you known for righteousness? Are you known for love? Because there's some people out there that say they're Christians, but they're not living Christianity. They're not loving their brother or their sister. Amen? Amen? So that means you have to do even better at serving Christ and honoring Him. Amen? Amen? Number one, love your neighbor as yourself. Number two, walk in the Spirit. Now, I make that sound simple because it's just simple little words up there. But I want you to know it's a challenge to daily be reminded, I need to listen to God and do what God wants. I need to let God lead me today. I need to let Him take direct my steps today. That's, a, that's an active decision that I have to make every single day. Galatians 5, 16 through 18. This I say then, walk in the Spirit... And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Did you see that verse? If you're struggling with sin, walking in the Spirit will give you the breakthrough. Say amen. Amen. Everybody struggles with a sin. Ice cream. You say, ice cream is not a sin the way I eat it, it is. <laughs> You think I'm kidding. Hello. But if I listen to the Holy Spirit, he says, no, that's enough. Stop. Right. That keeps me out of sin. Because when I eat it the way my body wants it, it becomes a lust of the flesh. That's right. It's not tasting the flavors. It's just, I'll have more. I'll have more. I'll have more. I'll have more. A little bit more. I told you the story when I was at the store. This was years ago. And I had gone down the ice cream aisle. And I went to the checkout. And the lady says, oh, are you having a party? <laughs> and I said, no, those are mine. And she thought I was kooky. Aww. There were eight ice cream tables. 
things in my bucket. And that's all that was in there. And I polished off two of them when I got home. See, they, the ice cream is, yeah, anyway. So I do much better when I don't go down the ice cream aisle and I don't let the flesh lead me. When I let the spirit lead me, it's much better. Amen. Amen. Why am I saying this? Let me read what it says. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. What the Holy Spirit wants you to do is never what your flesh wants you to do. That's right. That's and these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Did you hear that? Yes. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. You get up and say, I'm going to serve you today, God. I'm going to do everything you want. And your flesh says, well, we'll see about that. Mm -hmm. And it starts finding you from the moment you wake up. Hello? Hello. Verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. You're not under the bondage of the flesh. The flesh doesn't rule over you. If you let the Holy Spirit lead you, and I guarantee you the Holy Spirit will lead you away from temptation, away from the situations that would pull you under. It will lead you around the ice cream aisle. Amen. Amen. After you receive Christ, your personal Savior, your spirit is made new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What becomes new? The inner man, the spirit man. When someone gets saved, their flesh doesn't change. Their mind doesn't change. Their heart changes. Amen. Their spirit is made new. The flesh, the habits, the mind, they change as you surrender to the spirit of God yes. and read and obey the word of God. So again, we have to get into the Bible to understand what God wants us to do. Yes, and guess what the flesh fights? Yes. Reading the Bible. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but let me give an illustration. You can sit down with your family and watch a movie and be totally engrossed in it. Easy. Even the children will be quiet and good. Open up your Bible right before dinner and try to read it for three minutes and have everybody quiet. The flesh fights this. Yep. Yes. Try to read it before you go to bed. You'll get to, you'll get to the second verse and calm. Yep. Amen. Wake up and say, oh, I was trying to read the Word. I'll just watch TV. And you'll stay awake for three hours. Yep. You see, the flesh doesn't fight the things of this world. It fights the things that are spiritual. All right. Why would the flesh fight that? Because the flesh doesn't want to give up control. Uh -huh. Hello? Hello. You ever, you ever met someone that wants to be in control and doesn't want to give it up? That's your flesh. It wants to take a hold of you and keep you in bondage and keep your spirit pushed under. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have to get the word in you have to hear the word for your life to transform. Many a person has given up on serving God because they are not willing to invest the time needed to read and study their Bible. Romans 12, 1 and 2. If you're writing down verses, make sure you get this one. This is, this is one of those life-changing, transformational verses. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, he's talking to Christians, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies, your bodies, a living sacrifice. Holy. Your flesh doesn't want to be holy. Your flesh wants to be sinful. Right. Paul says, hello, Christians. You need to present your bodies a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Holy. Acceptable unto God. And this is the part that you should wake up to, which is your reasonable service. Uh -huh. Paul said for Christians to live holy is only reasonable. We get this crazy idea that to live holy is something super special. Paul said, no, that's reasonable. If you're, if you're
you're living like you're supposed to, that's just reasonable. That's just regular everyday stuff. It's not some big thing. Mm -hmm. You say, but it is a big thing. <clears throat> Don't misunderstand what I'm talking about. Don't put all the importance of what you think you've done and just live reasonable before the Lord, which is holy living. Amen? Amen. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world. That means that the world's doing it, you shouldn't be. Amen. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. It may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I, I heard someone say one time that I love this illustration. And when you get the word of God in you, it begins to reprogram your brain. Your brain starts to think different. Oh, God doesn't want me to do that. Oh, God wants me to do this. Mm -hmm. God doesn't like that. God likes this. Mm -hmm. The things he doesn't like and doesn't want you to do, those are all fleshy things. The things he likes and wants you to do, those are all spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Which Paul said, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, was only reasonable. You want to grow in Christ? You must sow into your life the things that will help you grow strong in the Lord. And one of the biggest areas is reading the Word. Take the time. If you say, yeah, but I have trouble, just keep going. Don't give up. Every, every minute you spend in the Word is a minute you didn't spend doing something else. Number one, love your neighbor as yourself. Number two, walk in the Spirit. Number three, bear spiritual fruit. Hmm. Now, there's two verses in this passage, and it has nine fruits in it. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But and I, I, I should have said this another way because that's not what the Scripture says. The, the way I wrote it is the way it's written. It doesn't say bear spiritual fruits. It's a spiritual fruit. We, we think of it as nine different things. God sees it all as one thing. But the fruits of the Spirit. Not the fruits. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Let me see if I can give an illustration that you might be able to take home with you. If you take an orange and you peel the orange, the orange has a whole bunch of little widgets of fruit. When you pull one of those widgets out of the orange, you don't say, I've eaten the orange. You say, I've had a piece of orange. Did, did that make sense? Well, picture the orange being all of these nine things written in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. When you have all nine, you have the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you just have a piece of what you should have. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. I hope you, you take that, that, that is that just, that's a, see, see so many of us Christians, I did a good job today, I loved my brother, were you joyful, no, he was mean to me, <laughs> and you didn't express the fruit of the spirit, because that's the second word, love, joy, here's a good one, what's the third word, peace. You can be loving and joyful and not be at peace in your heart. And people around you know when you're not peaceful. Because you make everything around you not peaceful. You're not expressing the fruit of the Spirit. you got to have all of these working. You say, Pastor, that's a big thing. Now let's go back to the point before that. That's why you have to walk in the Spirit. Because if you're not walking in the Spirit, you will never be able to live bearing the spiritual fruit. 2 Peter 1 3. Oh, oh, I need to say this. You will bear fruit, Christians. Yes. You will bear fruit. Mm -hmm. The question is, what type of fruit will you bear? Yikes. Because it's either going to be good, holy, spiritual fruit, uh -huh. fruit of the Spirit, or it's not going to be fruit of the Spirit. 2 Peter 1 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him 
that have called us to glory and virtue. Did you see what he called us to? Glory and virtue. We want to go to glory, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He wants you to live with virtue. <laughs> How are you going to do that without him? Because I sure can. Romans 5, 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, before Christ, death ruled over me. Sin ruled over me. Amen? When I became a Christian, life ruled over me Amen. through Christ. Now I want to take you back a couple of verses. Galatians 5, 19-21. There's two verses that list the nine distinguishable parts of the fruit of the Spirit. And I didn't even count these. I should do this one day. Not today. Galatians 5, 19-21. Now the works of the flesh. It doesn't have ice cream in here, but I think it does. <laughs> now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, that's two verses, now I'm going to the third verse, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not Right. Shall not, shall not Yikes. inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> Why do you spend so much time on that, Pastor? Because people will do this. So let's make it really plain, shall we? I'm a good person. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to heaven. I didn't murder anybody. That's in the list. I didn't do that. Was she a drunkard? There's a comma after murder. Hello? Hello. Oh, no, no, I'm not a drunkard. Well, good. Did you hate anybody? Yeah, I hated some people. Well, that's in the verse before that. Well, two verses above. Hello? Hello. Well, I've never committed idolatry. That's bowing down to idols. Have you committed adultery? That's sleeping with someone who's not your husband or your wife. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Pastor, why did you have to bring all those things up? Because it's in the same list. Mm -hmm. God put it all together like that. Mm -hmm. Variance. That's a fancy word. Do you know what that means? Treating one person one way and someone else so totally different. Yikes. Showing this person a little favor and showing that person a little bit of disdain. That's variance. Wrath. Ever lost your temper? <laughs> I have. I wish I could tell you it was only at the devil. But it doesn't seem to work that way. The flesh doesn't really like to get mad at the devil. It likes to get mad at other stuff. And that's in the same bucket as murderers. Hello? Hello. So if you want verses 22 through 23... You're going to need to walk in the Spirit so you don't have verses 19 to 21. Amen? Mm -hmm. Romans 6, 21 through 23. What fruit had ye then in those things where are you now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit of the holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord is saying, look back in your past and look at some of the things your flesh did. And are you ashamed of that? Yep. Good! Now look at who you are in Christ and what's happened through the Spirit of God and you don't have those fleshy things now. You have spiritual things. Yes. And this is what I want you to have. Isn't that good? God just ties it all together and makes it plain, doesn't he? 1 John 3, 14, we know that we have passed from death unto life yes. because we love the brethren. 
He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Now, I didn't tell you that everybody around you is easy to love. And I didn't tell you that there are going to be times when you don't feel like loving somebody. But the scripture says you love them anyway. And you let him help you love them. You can love a person without loving what the person is doing. Those are two different categories. You can love an individual without loving their sin. I'm around sinners all the time. Yeah. I don't walk in and say, well, because you're a sinner, I'm going to have to stand over here. <laughs> because I can't let you contaminate my spiritualness. No, I'm around sinners all the time. I love people who are not saved all the time. But I don't love what they're doing. Yeah. I tell them the word of God. I tell them truth. Sometimes I get into some pretty interesting conversations because someone will tell me that what they're doing is not that bad. And who am I to judge them? And I just tell them, I, I'm not judging you. I'm simply telling you what the Word says. So if you're feeling conviction, that's the Holy Spirit. And now that you've been convicted by the Holy Spirit, you need to repent of your sin. Say it again. Oh, that makes them upset. Yeah. So you're saying that you're better than me. You're a goody two-shoes. Oh, no. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, I'd be where you are, but only worse. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a lot worse. Amen? Amen? But then I tell them, and I and I I almost end every conversation that goes like that with these words. I love you yeah. and I'm praying for you. Sometimes they'll respond with, really? You mean that? Yeah. Sometimes they'll respond with, well, I can't even repeat. <laughs> but it's true and you know what happens I usually see them again and one of two things happens when I see them again either they come up and, and, and want to talk because God's working on them and they're letting God work or man they try to get away so fast it's not me they're running from it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit but what so I know I know I don't I don't want to I don't want to get to point four, but I want you to hear this. What if nobody told them that what they were doing was sin? And God's ordained that moment for me to tell them the truth. And I decide that I don't want to get into the conversation because I've had too many that are ugly. And so I just not I'm just not gonna tell them. And I'm standing in front of God, and God says, I need to present someone to you. And he brings them up to me. You didn't tell them. And they're not going to heaven. And because you didn't tell them when I told you, neither are you. Mm -hmm. Whoa, wait a second, God. I, I preached every Sunday. I did what you told me to do, God. Not that time. That's right. See, obedience isn't pick and choose. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Why am I sharing this, saints? Because some of those conversations that are comfortable are necessary. Yes. All right, so let's get down to the real stuff, shall we? Sometimes those conversations are in your very own home. Mm -hmm. oh, pastor, mm -hmm. send me to the strangers. I can do that. Sometimes it's in your very own home. And you have to tell them the truth. In love, I have family members that do not like to talk to me. I love them, but they don't like to talk to me. Because they'll start the conversation with, now I know we're having a family gathering, but none of that preaching today. If you think I'm going to sit around and say nothing, you are mistaken. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I don't get in their face and say, you sinner, you, you're going to hell. I don't do that. But I guarantee you when the Lord prompts me, the conversation gets turned around to where it needs to get turned around to. And the reason they're saying none of that preaching is because they're being convicted. Yes. That's right. And I love them enough to tell them the truth because I want them to go to heaven. Amen. But the other thing that I pray, and I pray this a lot, Father, if they won't hear the words from me, send the person they will hear your words from. 
And I guarantee you he'll bring someone into their life that will tell them. And they, they will get saved. I've had family members, friends, and strangers that wouldn't hear the gospel from me. Get saved and call me up and say, I just wanted you to know I'm serving the Lord now. It's exciting. Yes. You, you say, well, Lord, why didn't you use me? Not my business. But I know that he sent me to people that other people would witness to that they wouldn't listen to. And they receive it. Okay, I need to move to number four because that clock didn't stop ticking. I gave it 15 minutes and it kept going. <laughs> number one, love your neighbor as yourself. Number two, walk in the spirit. Number three, bear spiritual fruit. Number four, live for Christ. So let me say this another way. Don't live for yourself. Don't live for your spouse. Don't live for your children. Don't live for your parents. Live for Christ. Amen. Do everything you do for Him, for His glory. Galatians 2.20, our key verse. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Yep. And the life which I now live in the flesh, that's the house I'm in, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Wow, that's powerful. Every day, Paul said, I get up and I crucify the flesh. I crucify the old man. I put the flesh under so I can live for God. We should take a lesson from that. Every day, we need to put the flesh under so we can live for God. How do we allow Christ to shine through us? How do we allow him to have his way? We surrender to the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Mm -hmm. Saints. When he saved you, he purchased you. Yes. He redeemed you with his blood. You are not your own. That's right. He holds the title deed to you. Spirit, soul, and body. So maybe we should take a little bit better care of God's property. Hello? Maybe, just maybe, we should make sure that what is his is cared for like it's his. <laughs> Wouldn't that change the way we treated our flesh? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that change the way we treated our mind? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that change the way we treated our spirit? It's not mine. <laughs> I'm just the caretaker. It's his. Mm -hmm. If your life is God's and your mind is going through a renewal process... If you're spending time in the Word and he's, he's reshaping the way you think, then wouldn't it be okay to conclude that God should have a say in what you think and how you live? Mm -hmm. Amen. Has anybody here ever rented a car? Mm -hmm. Have you ever read the contract? It's big. And it covers all the things that you can do in that car that is not yours. And all the things you cannot do in that car that is not yours. You know why? It's not your car. It's the real company's car. Mm -hmm. Well, why would we think that God would want to do something, let us just have free reign in this body that's not ours? Free reign in this spirit that's not ours. Amen? 1 Corinthians 2.16 For who hath known the mind of the Lord... And he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. And every time I get in here, I, I know this is really, really old, but I some of you might get it. Um, an old vinyl record mm -hmm. used to get scratches. Mm -hmm. When it would get a scratch, it would short circuit. It would skip over stuff. <coughs> You know what happens when, when you get the Word of God in you? It begins to rewrite those scratches of the world. 
and repair those brokennesses mm -hmm. and restore the proper way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. I can talk about vinyl records because I guess they're coming back in now. They are. Mine never got out. <laughs> I still use them. You want to be free? Really free in Christ? Then you need to surrender your all to Him. You need to surrender your all to what He wants. God will ask you to stop doing things that glorify the world, the flesh, and the devil. It says in 1 John 2, 15 through 17, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's right. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. God's going to ask you to start doing things that bring him glory. And he's going to ask you to stop doing things that don't bring him glory. He's going to ask you to do things that call you out of your comfort zone Amen. and stretch your faith a little bit yeah, it's not to boring. honor him. It's not boring. John Stout <laughs> said, Christian freedom is freedom to serve, not freedom to sin. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. yes. Christian freedom <clears throat> is freedom to serve, not freedom to sin. 1 John 3.18, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. truth. Amen. You want the world to know that you're a Christian? Yeah. Love them. Yeah. Love them by your actions. Follow it up with your words. James 4.4, 4, the adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Mm -hmm. I am not going to be God's enemy. Mm -mm. I'm going to be God's friend. Amen. Amen. Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Amen. Hey friends, say, shake hands, bless one another. Amen. Amen.